everyone, Sabrina from Campbell's Freedom Farm. I'm taking a quick coffee break and I'm going to talk to you about elephant's ears. I think they're so fascinating. It's such an important plant in this earth. What? <laughs> no, really it is. Most people in America think, oh, this is probably poisonous. And maybe there are some that are poisonous. But for the rest of the world, this is a main staple. So this has been around for a long time. Back in 1500 AD, a botanist, and I'm not going to say his name, but it, he's Greek, and he named it as the edible root. So for most of the world, this root, if you ever go to a supermarket with um, Asian or Indian food, it's called taro. And, but in Hawaii, it's called kalo, same thing. So the particular one I got, this elephant ear I got last year from my friends from Lowe's. Um, Lowe's brings in a variety of plants, which is really nice because I like the tropicals. An elephant ear is tropical. This particular one is Colcasia esculanto, okay? This one has the leaves that make a U up, so the leaves point up. There's another one that's called Alocasia, and I'm going to put a little link underneath, or I'll do those cliff notes that I write with my funky music and my wavy hand. <laughs> um, those leaves point down. Why is that important? It depends on what you want. I'm going to use this in the summer kitchen and I want to block the house because I want my summer kitchen to be a private retreat. And so I need to cover it. So I want the leaves to go up and really block the whole area. Underneath, I have some sweet peas and some containers which are perfect. And in this container, I'm going to put some um, flowers. I haven't decided. What I'm going to do, probably impatience. I really love impatience. And um, not the sun impatience, the, just the regular impatience. And I've already gone over some of that. So when you plant an elephant ear, it should go in partial shade. It's tropical. It doesn't like the hot baking sun. Tropical, remember from my other videos, likes up to 80, 90, you know. It likes lush, rich, humus soil. So I'm gonna use the miracle Grow, and I'm gonna put some in here. I'm only gonna go an inch or two. Remember, don't put it on the bottom unless you want a quick growth, but it washes away. So this particular one will get roughly five by four. They could go up to nine feet, but we don't have long enough um, growing zone. Oh, the roots are going everywhere. And you probably can't see, but I could probably get four babies out of here. Last year, there was just one. This year, it just really, really is growing to town. I might separate that one. Okay, now, fertilizing this. All the way through, you want to give it some nice um, miracle Grow or whatever one. I'll link mine to the store. Please support our store on Amazon or else go to your local hardware store or garden center. You're, gonna, you're not going to go for flowers, although it does flower, um, but you want the really fast growth. But in August, when it's really hot, and we're going into September, and it's going to like September a little better, you really want to get those roots going because this is a herbaceous plant, which means it dies back for the winter. And so um, you want a really good stock of roots. So I um, feed it one more time in August, September, check your weather, and then I stop. And then I'm going to let it just die back and then I'll bring it into the house. But this is a great plant. Um, I never did find out how old it is, 
um, we're talking the first century that it was named. So before that, it looks like a prehistoric plant. So who knows how long it's been, but I'll see you in the summer kitchen area. Talk to you later. Bye.